The snake's choice of food alters if it lacks fangs and venom. But what about bees, though? What if they lose their stingers? Bee stingers are well known among people and a bee just wouldn't be able to live if you suddenly take it away from it. However, that's not the case for vulture bees. Vulture bees eventually lose their ability to sting. In fact, they lost their stingers and they're doing quite all right. But how? Vulture bees first don't seem all that different from other bees. Their body structures are mostly the same after all. Legs, wings and eyes. Vulture bees also have hives, make honey and consume meat. I'm serious, bees consume meat. Vulture bees never touch buds or blooms. Rather, they obtain their sugar from specific plants, fruits and nectars. What about protein? Protein is obtained from the decaying meat that bees bring into their colony. Even if it seems like a terrible idea, give it some thought. In order to prevent a pandemic in the hive, insects often strive to get rid of their deceased. However, in this case, we have rotting flesh willingly brought into the hives. The meat is treated differently by vulture bees, who then store it in little pot-like receptacles. Can we claim that they prepare it in a unique way? Researchers have different opinions on this, but the general consensus is that bees store meat until it's time to feed the larva. Yes, as I mentioned, vulture bees resemble their vegetarian counterparts in many aspects, including their appearance, the amount of honey they produce, and their colony size. Their colonies have a distinct hierarchy that includes the queen, worker bees, drone bees, and the baby bees they take care of. Everyone in the colony is assigned a certain task, a typical hive structure. Vulture bees, like other bee species that dwell in hives, occasionally discover that their habitat is overcrowded. The old queen collects supporters and departs for a different location while the new queen takes over. That is typical behavior for bees, but in order to move a meat diet, these bees had to adapt. You can't spend your entire life gathering nectar and then one day start craving, well, a steak. Some scientists believe that these bees decided to give up the stinger since this would involve some kind of specific evolutionary mechanism. They may have had to sacrifice their stingers in order to obtain something like jaws. At least that's what they think. Additionally, vulture bees have unique teeth. Some accounts even claim there are many of them and they aid in biting flesh. I get what you're saying. Eating food like that isn't enough. You also need to find a way to digest it, and few species are capable of making flesh rot. However, we'll get back to that in a moment. After all, the meat must be transported to the hive by the bees as well. On their rear legs, the majority of bees have basket-like structures. Bees typically carry pollen, but vulture bees transport meat from the cadaver to the colony in a smaller basket with a slightly different construction. In order to make it easier to handle flesh, these insects have a different anatomy on their legs. That's a switch in Korea. However, do they digest bad meat? The majority of creatures who choose to consume anything like this run the danger of getting sick, and that's even the best case scenario. This is because dead bodies are packed with bacteria, and these bacteria engage in a territorial conflict that produces a lot of toxic, lethal chemicals. But in their small intestines, vulture bees have a special colony of microbes known as a microbiome. When scientists investigated these strange insects, they discovered that vulture bees are brimming with bacteria that love acid. These bacteria are comparable to those found in carrion-eating animals like hyenas and feathered vultures. A common bacteria found in many fermented foods, lactobacillus, was one of the microorganisms discovered in vulture bees. Well, the microbiome contains cyanobacterium linked to the digestion of meat, just like sourdough. These bees, in other words, have everything they require to consume corpses. I have to admit that I'm becoming a little apprehensive. Now let's discuss the stinger. The primary bee weapon is not found on vulture bees. Did it make them more resilient? Some believe that the bee stinger developed first to facilitate conflict between bees from various colonies, and that later, as a protection against mammals, the barbs developed. In one of our earlier videos, it has been noted that these barbs cause the bee stinger to become lodged when it penetrates, for example, in the human body. It may securely retract while simultaneously penetrating the chitinous plates of another bee's exoskeleton. However, the stingers are not intended to puncture just the opponent or the target. Apotoxin, the bee venom, is also injected into the victim along with the production of warning pheromones. These pheromones can draw bees like an SOS signal if released close to the hive or merely next to other bees. 
Can you picture how other bees might respond in that circumstance? Of course, if someone attacks me, I'll react defensively, which in bee terms means to fight him until he runs away or dies. The pheromones don't go away or disappear right away. Moreover, if a target enters the water, the bees will continue attacking as soon as the object comes back to the surface. Well, it would appear that having a stinger has numerous advantages, probably with the exception of the fact that bees that sting animals would perish. However, other than that, it's incredibly helpful. The fact that vulture bees cannot sting their foes does not render them harmless. I don't see how a meat-eating animal can be referred to as harmless, especially considering that vulture bees can bite, exactly like lions or crocodiles, I suppose. You have a little period of time to picture a bee with a crocodile head. Thus, certain bee species have the ability to sting people. Vulture bees make use of their jaws and unique fangs despite lacking a stinger, and by good usage I mean that that bite hurts a lot. Blisters form on the skin as a result of the bees' unique secretions on their jaws. These blisters develop into painful sores. However, you know what amazed me more than bees that consume meat by biting it? The thought of bees being formerly exclusively carnivorous. According to some experts, the common ancestor of all current bees was a carnivore some 100 to 120 million years ago. It's thought to have been a crab rhodonidae family predatory wasp. It hunted down and stung other insects, then took their dead to its young. But something occurred as time went on, and the bees have developed a strong vegetarianism over the previous 80 million years. Only three bee species still like meat now, apparently. Why did the forerunners of current bees alter their diet? Quite a compelling query. I've already said that it's quite impossible for an insect to decide to the course of its nature tomorrow. Regarding how things occurred, scientists have hypotheses. My favorite one is that the old wasps chased insects diligently and brought them to their larvae, but that the insects were all coated in pollen since, well, that's what they ate. This carried on for an extremely long period before the larvae eventually seemed to become used to it. Consider the larvae notifying their parents that going forward they'll consume only pollen. You can call that a prehistoric teenage uprising from the Mesozoic, However, the exact details of what transpired hundreds of millions of years ago remain unknown to experts. However, they do contain some peculiar, really peculiar facts. How do you enjoy dinosaur-eating wasps? Well, not exactly a fact, but it's kind of closely related, if you know what I mean. In that manner, back in 2011, researchers looked at a number of supposedly 70-million-year-old titanosaur eggs, which are quite gigantic because the titanosaurs are evidently also enormous creatures. In one of the huge eggs, it was also revealed by experts to contain, oddly, eight teeny tiny sausage-shaped structures. These sausages were actually fossilized cocoons of ancient insects that resembled wasp cocoons today. The theory put forth by the researchers was that when an old egg burst open, the odour attracted scavengers like a certain type of cricket, and the crickets in turn attracted wasps. After feeding, they spun inside the decaying eggs to create their cocoons. Who knows, though, maybe the first insects to show up close to the egg were the wasps. Maybe they consumed a young dinosaur, or perhaps they broke the egg. Okay, I just realised that I haven't yet answered the most crucial question. What does meat-based honey taste like if it is produced by vulture bees? Well, to be honest, I haven't tasted it yet, but those who have say it's a black, viscous and highly sticky, protein-rich material. Vulture bees don't make surplus honey as regular bees do. That is, they produce exactly what they require, so if you have to try it, count yourself lucky. This unusual honey's flavour has been compared to being strong, smoky, salty or just plain sweet. The meaning of it escapes me. Nevertheless, it is regarded as being less sweet than sugar. Actually, it can be considered a delicacy by humans, a special delicacy. How about the safety of this honey? Can we consume this honey as is, or is it a nasty toxin that can kill anyone that isn't a bee? After all, the dead body's abundance of deadly microorganisms is no laughing matter. According to the information I found, vulture bee honey doesn't include any ingredients that might be harmful to people. It's a fantastic food, just like regular honey, and it appears to be healthy all round, just for a minor detail though, it is radioactive. When American honey samples were tested, experts were shocked to find remnants of the 1950s and 1960s nuclear tests. More specifically, it was a cesium-137 isotope, and some samples had concentrations that were 100 times greater than those seen in other meals. 
But don't panic. Health risks do not exist here. The level of cesium-137 in American honey, according to researchers, is well below what is deemed dangerous. For comparison, the Florida honey that was determined to have the most radioactivity during the investigation had 19.1 bequerels per kilogram. The cutoff for food safety is 1,200 bequerels per kilogram at the same time. You understand, right? To experience any negative effects from a honey, you must consume a lot of it. Of course, bees are not harmed by radioactive honey either. It appears that these incredible insects didn't want to stop there. They began consuming cesium-137-laced honey, decomposing flesh, and even human tears. Shocked? <laughs> See you later.